Father, tonight we are grateful again for the privilege to gather on this day two of the Mentoring School, December 2023. Thank you, Lord, for this gathering and for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you did yesterday. Thank you for the straight word from heaven that shape and bring men and women back to the line of God's purpose. And we thank you for the voice of grace sounding from here to the ends of the earth to help and feed and strengthen men and women all over the world so that we can justify the purpose of redemption. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for everything. Lord, we return all the glory to you again tonight. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Tonight, we are looking unto you and we are depending on you that you will do even more than you did yesterday. That the word of God will come with clarity, with power, with authority, with precision, with accuracy. Helping men to become all that God wants them to become. Helping women to become all that God wants them to become. Batting revival and reawakening in the spirit of men and women. And bringing everyone in line with the purpose of God. Lord, I pray that everything that the devil has planned for today to hinder the penetration of the truth, to hinder understanding, to hinder interpretation, to hinder the flow of blessing, impartation, we take authority over it. We bind and scatter all the workings of the enemy. Let there be peace in this environment. Let the word of God come with an arresting freshness, bringing grace and power, opening the eyes of the blind, and bringing light upon the paths of men and women. To the glory of the Father, in the name of Jesus, online, on ground, I pray that hearts of men and women will be set on fire tonight in the name of Jesus. There will be that desire and passion to get back to the old path of Christianity. In the name of Jesus, we will not be satisfied with the lawlessness of our day. We will be satisfied with intimacy. We will be satisfied with integrity. We will be satisfied with the will of God. We will be satisfied with pursuing and establishing the purpose of God on the earth. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do and say the things that only you can do and say. Call back the sinner home, establish the feet of the believer, and help everybody here tonight, online, on ground. The same God is the same. I pray that the power of God rest upon everyone. And everyone who will later listen to this message, Lord, let there be a distribution of their portion, that there will be no, no perversion of the purpose of God in our day and in our generation. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let me welcome you to day two tonight of the Mentoring School December edition 2023. And I want to thank God for your life. And I also want to appreciate the grace of God upon this meeting. Um, those who are qualified to receive what God is bringing online or on ground, God has so, is so great, gracious to us that you are part of them. I'm praying that your own portion will not elude you. And you will go away from here tonight a transformed person. You will enter 2024 a better person, a better believer, a stronger believer, a more spiritually sensitive believer in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, we began the journey, and uh, we are not in a haste as at, at all. What is important to the Holy Spirit is your understanding. And uh, the Word of God is an open book, an endless revelation of truth. 
And I'm believing God that who is going to continue with us tonight. I told you that we are studying from Matthew chapter 5. And we are beginning our study of four verses. Verse 13, verse 14, verse 15, and verse 16. And we started with verse 13 yesterday. Now, just like I observed yesterday, by the grace of God, if Jesus studies, April edition 2024 of Mentoring School, we will still continue with this subject. Because it, it's very clear to me that we, we cannot finish um, the whole of that passage. I'm just believing that maybe God will help us to finish verse 13. Amen. Uh, in fact, men, six, seven mentoring school, we can't exhaust these. But we will keep moving as the Lord leads. Just make sure you receive as much as God has ordained for this edition of mentoring school. Is that okay? And you will keep your notes so that when next we have mentoring school, we'll just pick it up from wherever we stop and then we we'll continue. It is well with you. A time is coming that all our teachings would have been written in book form. So that as you are coming in, you are receiving the book. The published book. Not photocopied book. The published book. Are you hearing me now? I, are you, how many of you believe God is going to use you for that? Amen. Because that will make it more permanent. Um, and I know we still, we will still have workshop as time goes on. God will keep expanding the mentoring school. So this is one core of the assignment that God has given us as a ministry. It's not a church program. It's the ministry vision. And it's, it's, it's open to every member of the body of Christ anywhere to be part of what God is doing. And I believe your own part, another will not take. Yesterday, we began by looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And we are still dealing with the first statement in verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. You remember? And I told you, the people that Jesus was talking to, as at that time, they are the poor in spirit, they are those who mourn, they are those who are meek, they are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They are those who are merciful. They are those who are pure in heart. They are those who are peacemakers. They are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And then those who are joyful in the face of negative experiences of persecution and negative experiences of life generally. And I gave you the meaning of each of those things I shared. Those were the people that Jesus was directly referring to as ye. Because that statement is not a general statement for everybody. When he says ye, then he's talking to a group of people. Is that okay? He's not talking to everybody. He's talking to a group of people. Ye are the salt of the earth. So now, having said that, we began to look at in our own day. In our own day, who are the believers today that qualify to carry that spiritual identity of the salt of the earth? Just like not everybody in the day of Jesus was qualified to be referred to as the salt of the earth. The same thing in our day. Not everybody today, or let me say, not every believer today, is qualified to carry the identity of the salt of the earth. Is that okay? Not every believer. And I told you there are seven groups of believers in our day that can be successfully regarded or referred to as the salt of the earth. There are seven groups. And it is important for you to find out do you belong to that group? If not, one of the reasons of mentoring school is for you to find salvation. 
and for those who have wandered away from salvation to get restored. Because until you belong to this group, you cannot be a salt of the earth. You cannot be a blessing to your world as a believer. I told you yesterday, the first group of people today that are salt of the earth, they are the people who have been cleansed, not by the water of river, not by special sponge, not by a special prayer protocol of any prophet. Not by bringing water in the bottle or sachet water to program. Not all these pollutions that have taken over the body of Christ today. But those who are cleansed by the word. Somebody say by the word. The word of God is the cleansing agent. And it is when you are cleansed that you can become a blessing to your generation. Jesus said, ye are cleansed now. By the word that has spoken unto you. And not just cleanse. They are associated with Christ. They stick to Christ. They are attached to Christ. Number two. Uh, that was where we stopped yesterday. Am I correct? Though the people who have had the nature of Christ. Imparted on them. The same way the nutrient or sap of a tree flows into his branches. They are not the people that come to church, but the people that have, that have the nature of Christ imparted in them. It's a different thing to come to church. It's another thing to have the nature of Christ imparted. Until the nature of Christ is imparted into us, that we begin to behave like Jesus, manifest like him, our church attendance is wasted. And I'm praying for you that you will no longer waste your church attendance. Your church attendance will be an investment for the kingdom of God. Your church attendance will be a place, a, an, a, a, an opportunity for you to be developed. If it is everybody that goes to church today that have the nature of Christ in them, the world would have felt the impact of God. But unfortunately, many are in church without the nature of Christ. So only those with the nature of Christ can be the salt of the earth. So let me pick it from number three. You can now take your notes now. Who are the people who are in the group today who can be referred to as the salt of the earth? The people who have repented and have been converted and have responded to the call of Christ by coming out of sin, by coming out of the world, and by coming out of the principles of the world. They have repented. Don't forget it. They have what? Those who have repented. Not many people in our churches today have repented. We are pastors today who have not repented. Repentance is turning around. From where you faced before to another direction. So those who have repented. Not those who are still struggling with sin. But those who have repented. They are the ones that are, can be salt of the earth. Those who have been converted. You know, converted. That is, the things of old is no longer applicable to them now. The things they used to do before, that is sinful. They are no longer doing it again. The song they used to sing before, that does not connect them to the Holy Spirit. They are no longer singing it now. The friendships they used to keep before, that takes them away from the will of God. They are no longer in that friendship again. That's the meaning of conversion. Repentance means I am sorry. I see the wrongness of my action. I see the wrongness of my behavior. I can no longer continue like that. I am sorry. Conversion is I actually change. A 360 degree turnaround. 
complete difference from what I used to be. Those are the people that can be the salt of the earth. We are not talking of people that goes to church regularly and that also commits sin regularly. Repentance is so scarce in our day. And the reason is because the message on the gospel on the pulpit most times have been commercialized. It is the message of the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the cross that can bring repentance to the heart of sinners. Today, people go to church and they get, in, and they get entertained. There is no fear about sin again. The, 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 the sinfulness of sin is no longer there. You see? So, people are just having a nice time in church. So, there is no repentance. You know, before somebody began to come to church or be, I mean, confess to be a believer, and now that he says he's a believer, there is no longer difference. In fact, they are, they are worse now that when they claim to be a believer than before. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Those ones can be salt of the earth. And those are the many we have in the numbers of the body of Christ. That's why there is, the, the, there is, we don't have salt again on the earth. That's why the decay is much. Because decay cannot happen where salt is present. How many of you agree with me? Decay can't take place where salt is functional. But when salt is absent, or when salt has lost its savor, its saltiness, its purpose to preserve, then decay will happen unabated. And that's exactly what is happening now. So, to be a salt of the earth, which is your identity as a kingdom breed, you must have repented. The people that have repented, if you have not repented tonight, you can repent. You can give your life to Jesus and start a new journey. I've often asked people, are you born again? Share with me the testimony of your salvation. Unfortunately, majority don't even have testimony to share. And that immediately tells me that no, they are not born again. If you are born again, you will have a testimony. Is somebody hearing me now? The blood of Jesus is not powerless. Not to give you a testimony. If truly there has been a change from what you used to do before to what you are now, you, you will have a, you have a testimony. It, it will be that before, this is what I used to be. But now, this is what the Lord has done for me. That's a testimony. But today you discover people say, well, I remember I asked somebody, are you born again? He said, yes. I said, well, give me your testimony. When did you get born again? He said, I've been born again from my mother's womb. You know already that one does not even understand what we're talking about. Some people take just coming to church. I'm, I'm a member of the church. I come to church regularly. That's born again. No, that's not born again. Born again is you repent. You regret of your sin. You see the sinfulness of your sin. And after hearing the word of God, you are convinced that you are wrong. And you agree with God. And you confess no sin. And then you turn around. And then your life changes. Beloved, that's born again. That's why the Bible says, if any man is in Christ, is a what? A new creature. All things are passed away and all have become new. If that scripture does not describe your experience, you are not yet born again. But you can be born again tonight. Did you hear what I say? The love of God is still flowing. The mercy of God is still flowing. And thank God you are still alive. You, are, you didn't die yesterday. God is giving you an offering to get born again tonight. So the people who have repented, 
the people who have been converted and they have responded to the call of Christ by coming out of sin, they come out of the world and they come out of the principles of the world. They have come out of their natural self. They have come out of their bitterness. They have come out of their resistance to the truth. They have accepted the truth and practiced the truth. They are the people that are salt of the earth in our day. Now, open your Bible to Acts of the Apostle, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 3. I'll read verse 19. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Did you see that? That is repentance. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Did you get that? And then your sin will be what? Blotted out. No matter how terrible the sins are. No matter how bad the sins are. They can be blotted out. There is no sin that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. There is no sinner that the mercy of God cannot deliver. Don't let the devil deceive you that your own is too much that God can forgive you. Even if you have killed people. God's mercy is broad and strong. No matter how far you have wandered away, He can bring you back. He is a God of love. He is a God of mercy. Did you hear me now? But you must be ready to change. You must be ready to repent. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I read from verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. You see the call of God to his people here and what agreement had the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, what? Come out from among them. From where? Come out from their, from their practices. Come out from the sinful, sinful nature of the world. Come out from their godless principle. Come out from the Christless world. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And then I will what? I will receive you. And then, what will now happen? I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Those are the ones that can be the salt of the earth. Number four, who are the people that can be salt of the earth in our day? They are the people who are cleansed by the blood of Christ. And they have peace with God. They are cleansed by the blood of Christ and they have made peace with God. And now they are citizens of the kingdom. They are cleansed by the blood of Christ. They've made peace with God. Now they are citizens of the kingdom. They are citizens of the kingdom. Very, very important. They have a godly change of nature. They have a godly change of life. Those are the realities of those who can carry the identity of the salt of the earth. Very important. And our world will be preserved if we have people like this in the church. If we have people like this as believers, our world will be preserved. Let me take it again. Those who are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ and they have made peace with God. There is no quarrel between them and God. 
Because sin is always bringing quarrel between God and man. Is that okay? So they've made peace. They have peace with God. There is no more quarrel. They are no longer living a lifestyle of sin. They are now citizens of God's kingdom. They have a godly change of nature and life. Write down 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Just write it down. But let us look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 to 19. And let me show you how the Bible describes such people. Ephesians chapter 2. I read from verse 13 to verse 19. The Bible says, But now in Christ Jesus. It didn't say, But now in church. The church is important. But the essence of the church is for you to be in Christ. If you are not in Christ, church is not useful to you. Verse 13, he said, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh. By what? By what? By the blood of Christ. For he that is Christ is our peace. Who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us. These are the things that happen when your redemption was secured. Verse 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances, for to make in himself twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him, we, that is those who are far and those who are close, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, Beloved, this is your current status. If you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but what? Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles. You know what that means? Whatever you can find with the apostles, we shouldn't find with you. Whatever practice that is not with the apostle shouldn't be your practice now. Find out how did the apostle pray. Find out how did they study the word. What is the place of prayer in the life of the apostle? What is the place of the word of God in the life of the apostle? What was the nature of the spirit of the early church? So Jesus Christ the apostles and prophets that have gone ahead of us and of which the Bible documented their life have become our standards that we should look like. There are many things that so-called believers today are practicing that the apostles never practice. Is somebody hearing me now? So those things will take them out. They are the corruption and the pollutions that have come to the body of Christ. The Bible says, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself. Somebody say Jesus Christ himself. You know he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hello? What you don't find in Jesus, we shouldn't find in your life. What Jesus didn't say, you shouldn't say it. What Jesus didn't practice, you shouldn't practice it. That's when you are a correct citizen of the kingdom. And that's when you can be the salt of the earth. Number five, the people who are the temple of God, in whom the spirit of God dwells. It takes the spirit of God to be the salt of the earth. 
It takes the spirit of God to, be, to carry that identity. So, those who are the temple of God, what does it mean to be the temple of God? That is, the spirit of God is taking permanent residence inside of you. The spirit of the world have no place in you. The spirit of sin have no place in you. The spirit of God is what is, what is res residing in your life. When you finish dressing, check out, is it pleasing to the Holy Spirit? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? You are not dressing primarily for people. You are dressing primarily to please the Holy Spirit. Check out. Check out with your spirit. Is it pleasing to the Holy Spirit? These words I want to say. Is it pleasing to the Holy Spirit? The greatest tragedy that can happen to a man. The greatest evil that can happen to a woman. Is when the Spirit of God departs from you. Because of your carelessness. Don't ever let that happen. Is that okay? Those who the, in whom the Holy Spirit is dwelling. Guide the Holy Spirit more than the pregnancy you have. Guide the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God in the life of a man is something more than gold. Don't lose the treasure of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your greatest assurance of success. It's your greatest assurance to fulfill your destiny. It's the greatest assurance that you will fulfill your purpose. You will justify your creation. The Holy Spirit is the empowerment from heaven to live life on the earth successfully. The Holy Spirit is your certification on the earth. A divine certification as an agent of God on the earth. Create an atmosphere of, that the Holy Spirit can stay with you. Is somebody hearing me now? Create a conducive atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to reside in you. To stay with you. To reside in you. To have its residence in you. Let your thoughts be clear. Let your actions be godly. Check around you. What are the things that can grieve the Holy Spirit? Get rid of them immediately. Pay the price it requires to keep the Holy Spirit inside you. You know why I'm shouting? The reason is because if the Holy Spirit leaves you, the demonic spirit will take over your life. Your life can never be empty. Something is living inside you. If it is not the Holy Spirit, then it is a demonic spirit. The spirit of the world, the spirit of lust, the spirit of lawlessness, the spirit of rebellion, a demonic spirit. And you know what? There are many of such demonic spirits in the churches, dwelling in the people who call themselves believers. Because they cannot pay the required price to make their life conducive to the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is no longer residing in you, you cannot be a salt of the earth. You, without the Holy Spirit, are more useless than anything. Is that okay? Is that okay? Somebody say the Holy Spirit and I. Say the Holy Spirit and I. Say the Holy Spirit and I. That's when you are useful. That's when you can be a blessing to your world. That's when you can represent the kingdom. That's when you can establish the purpose of God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I read verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, Know ye not. Now, in case you do not know, this is the Lord telling us now. Know ye not that ye, who ye, are the word, the temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwelleth where? In you. Make, it, make, make, make your life conducive for the spirit of God to dwell. 
Don't say things that will take the Holy Ghost out of your life. Don't behave in a manner that the Holy Spirit will live your life. Verse 17. If any man. Is that in your Bible? Talk to me. If any man defile the temple of God, defiling it with sin, defiling it with evil thoughts, defiling it with lust, defiling it with worldliness, if any man defile the temple of God, what did the Bible say how will happen? Him shall God destroy. May God not destroy you. And you know that many people are being destroyed today because they are defiling the temple of God. Beloved, if the Holy Ghost can't dwell in you, sickness will take over. Assault of the devil will take over. The conditions that you, you maintain in your body every day that makes the Holy Ghost to stay with you are the conditions required to destroy sin and sickness and disease completely. Did you hear what I just said now? Hello? Now many of you know if you have a fleet in your house an insecticide and then you fleet your room. Do you know it's not only mosquito you will kill? Do you know you will kill cockroaches too? And so many other insects all will die too? How many of you agree? You know spider will also go? And all that. Now, the more the Holy Spirit stays in you, and you make your life conducive for the Holy Spirit to stay, the more sickness can touch you. Hello, somebody. Whatever you do that makes the Holy Spirit to leave you opens your life to sickness, opens your life to disease, opens your life to satanic assault. You are not doing God any evil by making the Holy Spirit leave you. You simply did a terrible harm to yourself. You are the greatest, you are the greatest beneficiary of paying the price that makes the Holy Spirit to stay with you. May the Spirit of God not say bye-bye for you. May the Spirit of God not say goodbye to you. Those who are the temple of God, in whom the Spirit of God dwells, they are the one that can be the salt of the earth. They are the one that can carry that identity. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let me read verse 11. Verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now before verse 11, it was talking about those people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me start to read from verse 9. Are we together? First Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor exhaustioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now look at verse 11. And such were some of you. What is the meaning? That's what you used to be before you became born again. Are you hearing me now? You were like that before. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. Some, something has changed now. There must be that noticeable change. Before your salvation is credible. If there is no noticeable change, there is no credibility of your salvation. He said, but ye are washed. Ye are what? Sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. Sanctified means you are separated. After you are washed by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, you are separated. 
you are not again available for common use. You are available for special use. You are consecrated. It's not everything they do in the world that you can do. You are, you are disconnected from the general lawlessness of the world. That is the meaning of, and ye are sanctified. Come on, somebody say, I am special. Say, I am separated. You know, that, you know all the clothes you have, they are in divisions. There are clothes you wear just to play around in the house. Yes or no? There are also clothes. There are clothes you wear on occasion. That you keep those ones ironed, washed, neat, packed in your closet, in your wardrobe. You keep it there. And you wear them only on special occasion. That one is also a what? A cloth. Am I correct? That's the meaning of separation. You are sanctified. You are sanctified. You are, when, when, when you are washed, then you say you are sanctified. That's why you can be the salt of the earth. You say ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And what? And by the spirit of our God. And by the spirit of our God. Look at verse 19. Let's go to verse 19. The same chapter. Paul the apostle said, what? In case you don't know. Some people don't know. So he was so surprised. He said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Somebody say, I am not my own. Now, where is your body? Can you touch your body? This is my body. Can you touch your own? That is where the Holy Ghost wants to dwell. So you are not your own. It is illiterate people in the spirit that says, well, my body is my body. I own my body. I can dress as I like. Educated member of the kingdom knows that their body is no longer their own. God is interested in that body. Did you hear me now? Oh, talk to me. Did you hear me now? God is what? Interested in that body. Your body is no longer your own. You cannot come and say, it's my body. It's my life. And leave me alone. Let me do as I like. That's not the language of the citizens of the kingdom. Those who understand what it means to be a breed of the kingdom knows that their body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. You can't do anything you like with it. You can't fornicate with it. You can't be an adulterer with it. You can't do what you like with your body. You cannot masturbate with your body because that body is the house of the Holy Ghost. Is somebody hearing me now? And if it houses the Holy Ghost, somebody say Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. What kind of ghosts are we talking about? Holy Ghost. Then you must run away from every dirty things. Dirty thoughts. Dirty actions. Dirty life. Dirty behavior. They grieve the Holy Ghost. And they open the door for satanic demonic spirit. Your greatest deliverance is to live a holy life. That's your greatest deliverance. Are you hearing me now? Because as you keep the Holy Spirit in your body, you keep demonic spirit out of your life. Look at verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. How many of you believe you are bought here? Let me see your hand if you believe you are bought. Some of us are bought. Me, I'm bought. I can't do what I like. I've been bought 40 years ago. From that time, God determines the trajectory of my life. I can't do what I like. I can't, when it was time to marry, I cannot even marry the woman I want. I must marry the woman he wants for me. That is how serious we are, we are talking about. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? You can't make your choice again. You can't do what you like again. That's how to be a salt of the earth. 
He had bought with a price. What is that price? The blood of Jesus. How much is he worth? In dollars. I'm asking you. How much is he worth? In pounds sterling. Huh? Eh? <laughs> Beloved, nobody can determine indescribable value, precious blood of Jesus. Why did God use what is precious to redeem you? Because you are precious. Come and say, I am precious. That's why God used what is precious. When God place you up high, don't go and fall down. Huh? You are not a child of the ground. You are a child of hope. Look at how God cherishes you and places you up high. Look at what redemption has done for you. It is foolishness to walk away from that. And now come back to the ground. May you never come back to the ground. In the name of Jesus. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore. Somebody say therefore. What is therefore? Glorify who? God. We are. Because many people have come with different theology that say, well, it's our body. God doesn't look at the body. It's the spirit that God is concerned about. How many of you have heard that before? He said, forget about the body. It's my spirit. As long as my spirit is okay. I hope this is in your Bible. Therefore, what? Glorify who? God. We are. In your body and in your spirit. Which are your own? Is that what the Bible says? Which are your own? Is that? Which are who? God. If your body and your spirit are God, can you determine what you will do there? No. Who determines what will be done in your body? God. Who determines what will be done in your spirit? God. These are the people that are salt of the earth in our day. Did you hear me now? You can't be romancing with corruption. I want to, I want to remove corruption. You can't be decaying yourself. I want to stop decay. You can't be terrible yourself. I want to remove sin. I, I, I want to help sinners. So when Jesus said, "Yeah, the salt of the earth," he's talking about the people who are the temple of God. In whom the spirit of God dwells. Number six. The people who are Christ's convert. The people who are Christ's disciples. The people who are Christ's followers. Those are the people that are salt of the earth. Those are the group that are qualified to carry that identity in our generation. Those who are disciples of Christ. Those who are followers of Christ. Don't just be a church member. Be a disciple of Christ. Did you hear me now? Church membership is good. But let disciple of Christ be your target. If you are a disciple of Christ, you'll be a better member of the church. You'll be a better member of the family of God. You'll be a better human being. You'll be a better representative of God in your place of work. A disciple of Christ. Those who are Christ's disciple and those who are followers of Christ. Write down Romans chapter 1 verse 5 to 7. You can read it up on your own. And then First John chapter 4 verse 4. Romans chapter 1, verse 5 to 7, and 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. The seventh group. Who are the people in our day that can safely carry the identity of the salt of the earth? The people who are the chosen generation. Let me give you the full description. 1 Peter Chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. 
that passage described it completely. These are the people that are salt of the earth. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation. You see the pedestal that redemption has placed you onto. How many of you know in redemption, God's called you very high? Did you hear what I just said? In redemption, God's called you very what? Very high. By the blood of Jesus. Please don't fall down from grace. Every backslider has fallen away from grace. Don't fall from grace. Don't fall out. Are you hearing me now? This is how the Bible says. Ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. An holy nation. A peculiar people. That. You see the identity there and your ministry. How many of you understand now? What is your identity? A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. An holy nation. A peculiar people. What is your ministry? That ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10. Which in time past were not a people. Okay? You cannot be referred to as a human being before. That's why, that's what the Bible is saying. But are now the people of God. You are not just a people now, but you are the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. These are the seven groups of people today that can qualify as a salt of the earth. When you get back home, I want to look at all the seven and place yourself. If you weigh, thank God. Just continue. But if you know those seven things are not realities in your life, let God help you. So that you will not suffer identity crisis. And you will not fail God in your life. Now, before we go today, let me start what I call the believer's ministry of spiritual influence. We are getting into ye at the salt of the earth now. Having known the people that qualify to be the salt of the earth, Let's talk about what does it mean to be a salt. And that is what I mean by the believer's ministry of spiritual influence. The language of Jesus Christ as he spoke to his audience was very clear. As an anointed communicator, Jesus Christ connected with his audience using the object they could easily relate with. When he said, ye are the salt of the earth. Listen everybody. They know what he was talking about. You know why? Because they know salt. How many of you know salt here? How many of you know salt here? How many of us are using salt today? How many of us can do without salt? Huh? How many of us can do? In fact, some of us will overeat it. It's in, in fact, if there is no salt in your food, after some time, you will begin to suffer deficiency. Am I correct? You begin to suffer deficiency and some, sick, and some disease conditions will begin to show up. That's how important the salt is. Jesus is an anointed communicator. He will use what people know to teach them the spiritual things they don't know. So when he said, here are the salt of the earth, 
his communication was clear to his audience. They understood what he said. They related with him because they know salt. Just like you are relating with this teaching now. Because you know salt. You know what salt is used for. And you are using salt every day. So when he said, ye are the salt of the earth. It was not only revealing their, their identity. But it was also laying emphasis on their peculiar ministry. Of spiritual influence. Say after me, ye are the salt of the earth. Jesus was talking about their identity. And Jesus was also talking about their peculiar ministry of influence on the earth. Believers may not be able to understand the details of God's expectations from them in the ministry of spiritual influence. Until they understand how salt practically operates. Did you hear what I just said? Until you understand how salt practically operates. You may not understand how to fulfill your peculiar ministry of influence. In the world. But when we know how salt operates. We will know. How God, what God wants us to do. And we will know the expectation of God from us. Is somebody hearing me now? Now, the first question is this. How does salt operate? How does salt operate? When you know how op salt operates, you will know how God wants you to operate as a believer who is a salt. Come on, say, I'm a salt. You are not a salt of the soup. You are the salt of the heart. Come on, say, I'm a salt of the heart. I'm the salt of the heart. You are the salt of that office. You are the salt of that school, that campus. You are the salt there. You are the salt in your street. You are the salt in your family. That is if you say you are a believer. If you are not a salt, you are failing. You are disappointing God. You are wasting redemption. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Apart from, uh, beyond every spiritual activities we get ourselves involved in. If we are not doing this one, we have failed. If we like, let's fast from, from today till Jesus come. If you don't operate as the salt of the heart, your fasting is useless. Today, people will elevate spiritual activities more than the life that gives credibility to those activities. You, will say, you hear people say, I've been fa I fasted for 180 days. The, uh, the question is, and so what? Talk to me. And so what? I fasted for 200 days. And so what? If you are not living the life that will give credibility to your fasting, your fasting is useless. In fact, it amounts to empty boasting. Hello, somebody. Most of the time when people say, well, I fasted for 500 days, they are looking for relevance. Most of the time. They want people to see them as a powerful man. Can I say something? Until you fulfill your ministry as a salt of the earth, you are not a powerful believer. The devil has no respect for you. If you like, fast from January to December. Because people are always living what is most important and looking for things that will service their ego. In the estimation of heaven, God has no 
respect for somebody who is fasting from January to December, but who is not a salt of the earth as a believer? Is somebody hearing me now? Say it again. I'm, a, I'm the salt of the earth. If you are in Akure here, you are the salt of Akure here. You are the salt of Lagos. You are the salt of your community. You are the salt of the, your colleagues. If you are born again, if that, if that is if you say you are born again. No? Where the salt? Now, how does salt operate? That will teach us how God expects us to operate. Is somebody still with me? I'll tell you three ways that salt operates. Number one, salt prevents decay in food by creating an unfavorable condition that makes it impossible for microorganisms to survive and cause spoilage. Decay is caused by microorganisms. Are you with me now? As long as microorganisms are in our food, what will happen to those food? It will decay and spoil. So salt will now come in now, create an atmosphere that is not conducive for the microorganisms to work. Are you following me? Are you following me? As long as the microorganisms cannot work, decay will be arrested. Spoilage will be prevented. How many of you understand that simple explanation? Huh? So when you put salt on your meat, you are making it difficult for the microorganisms to work. And by so doing, you are arresting decay. You are preventing spoilage. Are you hearing me now? You are, pre you are, you are preserving the natural quality of that food. And you are extending what we call chef life. You are extending the chef life. Am I correct? Now, in the same way, somebody say in the same way, believers are salt. We are to prevent our world from moral decay. And spiritual corruption by our conscious godly life example and positive influence, which makes it difficult for the devil and his demons to operate. Look up, everybody, understand it. You can listen to the teaching on tape and update your notes. Did you hear what I say? What did I say salt do? It creates an inconducive atmosphere for the microorganisms to work. And as long as the microorganism cannot work, the food will not spoil. The microorganisms are like devil and demons. Hello? And all their associated negative spirits. You, as the salt of the earth, you are to create an inconducive environment for devil and demonic spirit from working by the quality of your godly example. When you do that, you are preserving your community from moral decay and spiritual corruption. Look up. That's how we are created to live. 
that because you are there in that school, the devil does not have a free hand to do what he wants to do. Because your life is stopping him. This, did you hear what I say? Your life is stopping him. Your godly example is stopping him. Your prayer is stopping him. Your spiritual activity is stopping him. And as long as you are stopping the devil and demons from operating, you are preserving your community from moral decay, from spiritual corruption. Now, do you know why we should weep today? Beloved, our generation of believers has completely abandoned that ministry. What remains for us is the competition we do with the clothes we wear to church. In fact, many of us have even joined them in their moral corruption. Our salt have lost its savor. Did you hear what I'm saying now? The instrument that will ensure standard will not have any margin, will not have tolerance for any margin of error. Many believers today are a complete shame and disappointment to God. In fact, some believers today have been employed by the devil as an agent to fester his kingdom. Are you guilty before God or God can pass you? Is somebody hearing me now? That office where you are, is the devil not operating without Entrance? Is the devil not walking without any entrance? Have you not even joined their moral corruption? In fact, for some of us in today's generation, we should be ashamed to carry the Bible. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? There must be revival in your heart. There must be a change of your life. At where you belong. That corner where you are. Your school. Your campus. Your home. Your family. Your place of work. Your professional association. Your shop. Your office. The marketplace. Where are you? That small corner where you are. This is your assignment. And don't fail God again. Hello? Live your life in such a way that the devil is not free to operate. Is somebody hearing me now? Hello? Is somebody hearing me? That the devil is not what? Free to operate. Because the devil is like the microorganism that want to spoil the food. The food that the human beings there. You are the salt now. You bring a godly example. You live a righteous example. And your life is a threat to the devil. Many terrible spirits can no longer operate because you are there. You can't change what you are part of. You do hear what I'm saying now. In fact, it is so hopeless today that there are some unbelievers that appear better than so-called churchgoers. I'm telling you, something is what is seriously wrong. That we have gotten into a stage that some unbelievers are even better. That's something is wrong. But God is calling for revival today. Most of, the peop- most of the things that people call revival today is just noise making. Just noise making. Just noise making. We just want to disturb the streets by our big loudspeaker and amplifier. He called that revival. Real revival is when every one of us will go back to our communities and begin to fulfill the duties of salt. Is somebody hearing me now? That you are in that school, 
Demons cannot operate easily. Your life is setting a standard. Everybody's looking at your life and their challenge and their challenge and their challenge. Your prayer creates an unconducive environment for the devil to operate. Your life brings conviction to sinners. They can't walk. You are not part of their lawlessness. You don't join them. You stood out. And as long as the devil cannot operate, you prevent that place from moral corruption, from moral decay, and from spiritual corruption. It's so terrible today that even our churches are morally decaying. Even our churches are spiritually corrupted. The devil has taken the battle to us. And many times he has defeated the church. But I pray that you will be part of the remnant that God is depending upon. You will go from this mentoring school Pick up your ministry as a believer. As a salt where you are. And you will prevent your community from moral decay. And from moral corruption. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. If we don't do this primary assignment. There is nothing we do for God that is acceptable. In fact, it's a principal failure. If we fail in this, we fail in everything. If you like, build a church for God. It doesn't count for anything. God is not looking for your money. He's looking for your life. There's nothing we do for God that can impress him. More than for us to begin to live a life where we are that disturb the devil from having free range. That the devil can no longer walk. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When I was serving in Edo State, the school where I, was up, where I was placed to serve, they don't have anything fellowship there. In fact, it was a dark region in Edo State that time. It was a dark region. I was posted to serve at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. But because of my spiritual assignment, I decided, to, I decided to tell them to reject me there. Because I will be coming to Akure every week because of ministerial assignment. And I knew it would be too far from Akure every week as at that time. Is somebody hearing me now? So I relocated to Sobe. They have a secondary school in that in that um, in that place. Before I got there, there was nothing like fellowship. There was nothing like... I got there as a copper. I was handling biology. As at that time, biology used to be a compulsory subject for everybody. They have changed that standard now. So we have a group of students that will pass through secondary school without knowing biology. That's a minus to our curriculum. But that time, many of you understand what I'm talking about. Biology is a component. Either you are science, you are art, you are commercial. You must do biology. And that's an opportunity for me to now relate with every student in the senior class. Are you hearing me now? I began to relate with them one-on-one. -on -one. I studied that environment. I discovered there was nothing like that was nothing like fellowship. That was nothing. Like fellowship. The whole place was dark. I mean, in the spirit, darkness was terrible. The students are terrible. And I began to pray. And one day, I had a leading of the Holy Spirit to approach the principal, and God took control. My principal was good, and he said, "Ah, if you can spare head, no problem." And then I consulted with some of the teachers who are Christians, who are permanent teachers, who are Christians. They told me about all that the effort they have made before and that nothing has actually worked. But I said, this one will work. Oh. I will only need your cooperation. You know, it takes a level of boldness for a copper, a copper, to secure the commitment and the cooperation of 
the permanent teachers. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Especially on spiritual matters. But God took control. They supported. And then we, I announced to the student because deliberately I was very free with the students. Deliberately creating a room for them for me to be able to tell them share the gospel with them. Is somebody hearing me now? I wasn't hard. I wasn't difficult. I was deliberately, in, I mean, free with them. They are free with me. They come to me. I teach them. I even do extra teaching for them without collecting a dime. So when it was time for fellowship, when I introduced, they said, ah, if Copper Washington is there, all of us will be there. And we started fellowship. It was a revival in that school. Even my principal will come to fellowship. All the teachers there will be in fellowship. It was a revival. Is somebody hearing me now? And I come, I teach every week, Wednesday. I do fellowship. Every week, Wednesday, I do fellowship. Every week. We finish on time. In fact, it got to a time that the principal made it mandatory that we finish school by 1 1 30. So that we can have one full hour to do fellowship before the, before the students will go back to, to, will go to their houses. And it was a time of refreshing. Many of them got born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There is a pastor of a church, Assemblies of God Church in that town, that time. He, he, he was a, 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 a staff in that school that time. When he saw what happened, and the way the Holy Ghost was dishing out the word of God to them. He said, can, he didn't call me copper again. He said, man of God, can, can, you, can you do Bible study for us in our church? And I said, no problem. So after fellowship on Wednesday, in the evening I'm in town, assemblies of God church there, for that one year, I was doing Bible study for them in that church. And you know what happened? All the students that were in fellowship, all of them and the teachers, who are not even members of that church, just because I was going to do Bible study there, all of them would flock to that place. That was how revival started. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I can tell you today by the grace of God that my service here was not a disappointment to heaven. If everyone is doing that thing, we're only invading our environment. We will deny the devil the, the right to operate. And we will preserve our communities from moral decay and spiritual corruption. When we say decay is everywhere, you know why? We have failed God on a monumental level. As long as we fail God, decay will take over. I pray we will not fail God again. I can't hear your amen. I want every one of us where you are, your community, as a believer, your life of influence and godly example must preserve men, must preserve women, must preserve children, in your community from the corruption of sin and moral decadence. That's the first way salt operates. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Number two. Salt arrests decay by making the water and all other essential components of the food unavailable for the microorganism. So the microorganisms will die. Since they don't have access to the water in the food and the nutrients in the food, Because it is when they have access to the water in the food and the nutrients in the food that they will pass waste products that 
causes the food to spoil. Hello? How many of you use salt to preserve your fish? Your meat? How many of you have used salt before? You use salt to preserve your, your fish, your meat, your chicken. What are you doing? That chicken contains water. Am I correct? It also has some nutrients. Those are the things that the microorganism feed on. When the microorganism can feed on the water and the nutrients in the fish, they will excrete. And that food will spoil. So when you put salt, salt will make the water in the fish unavailable. Did you hear me now? Salt will, will seize the water. Salt will seize the nutrient. Even though the microorganisms are there, but they cannot assess the water and the nutrient. So they will die. Hello, somebody. Do you hear what I say? That is exactly how salt operates. To preserve the food and arrest decay. Beloved, in the same manner, believers are salt are to arrest and reverse the spiritual degradation and moral failure of the world by consciously living a godly life that is consistent with the scriptures and giving glory to God. As a believer, your life and example must constantly challenge everybody you come in contact with to repent and return to God and righteousness. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? If you study how salt operates, you will understand how God wants you to operate. You are the hand of God in that community. You are the leg of God in that community. If you fail, you have failed God there. If you are a believer, I want you to go out from today with the mindset of I am representing God wherever I am. Is somebody hearing me now? People must know God because you are there through your life. Did you hear me? The devil must not be able to walk because you are there. Your life must stop him. Your example must stop him. Your prayers must stop him. When that happens, we will pre prevent our community and this world from moral decay and spiritual corruption. That is our ministry. Did you hear what I say now? That is what our ministry. When they say, what is your ministry? Abundant Grace Ministry International. No. Abundant Grace Ministry International is not your ministry as a believer. This one is your ministry as a believer. Did you hear me now? Assault. Where you are. Where you are. That's why your life is important. Your life is important. Your life is important. Your prayer is as powerful as your life. Your fasting is as powerful as your life. Your church attendance is as powerful as your life. Everything God will get done in your area, He will get it done through your life. Somebody say, my life is important to God. You are not talking to me. Say, my life is important to God. You must be careful. You must be aware. Don't get lost in the midst of the world. Always remember who you are and know that your life is a weapon in the hand of God to preserve the world from corruption. Number three, salt is a seasoning agent in food. Is it, apart from preventing decay, 
Salt, season agent. It's a season agent. It's season the food. Is somebody hearing me now? Many of you will season your chicken with salt. You use other things, but salt is very important. Am I correct? When you want to season your meat, you use other things, but salt is what? Important. Other things you use will not be complete without salt. So it's not only an agent that prevents decay alone. It is also a seasoning agent. Say after me, I am God's seasoning agent. Say it again, I am God's seasoning agent. When we say seasoning agent, what do we mean? It means that salt will improve. Let me borrow my professional language. There is what we call organoleptic qualities of food. And I will mention examples. Salt will improve the organoleptic qualities of food. When you put salt to your food, you are not only looking for the arrest of decay alone. You are also looking for the improvement of the organoleptic qualities of that food. Somebody say organoleptic qualities. Say it again, organoleptic qualities. What do we mean by that? Number one, taste. Somebody say taste. Taste is an organoleptic quality. What do you do to food first and foremost before you begin to eat it? Huh? You taste it. If the food has no taste to you, will you eat it? Can you just be swallowing a food that has no taste to you? It is the taste that will determine either you will eat it or not. And either you will enjoy it or not. So taste is an organoleptic quality. Number two, flavor. Somebody say flavor. How it smell. How many of you know that some food that when it is still on the, on the gas cooker, you know, the flavor is inviting you. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? You begin to say, ah, what, what food are you cooking there? You're already salivating. You're already looking forward to when you will consume the food. And not somebody. Because the aroma is disturbing your nose. You say, wow, ah, I can't wait. That's flavor. That's another example of organoleptic quality. The third one is desirability. Somebody said desirability. From desirable, desirability. You know, there are some food that are not desirable. Are you hearing me now? But there are some food that are desirable. Because the taste and the flavor is okay. They are desirable. Desirability. That's part of organoleptic qualities. And then the next one is acceptability. Somebody say acceptability. So I've given you four examples. Taste, flavor, desirability, and acceptability. So when I say salt is a seasoning agent that improves the organoleptic qualities of a food, what I'm saying is that salt improves the taste, yes or no? It improves the flavor, yes or no? It improves the desirability of the food, yes or no? It also improves the acceptability of the food. Beloved, in the same way. Somebody say in the same way. As believers, our life as salt must constantly attract and provoke others to, be, to godliness. Our life must constantly attract and provoke others to become thirsty for God and godliness. Just like you are looking forward to eating the food. Just because of the, of the flavor. Everybody around you as a believer must be looking forward to come to God. And to become thirsty for God. By looking at your life. You must be a seasoning agent. That everybody is attracted to God. 
Everybody is attracted to godliness. Because of the flavor of Christ in your life. Hello, somebody. Ah. Did you hear anything tonight at all? That is the life that God wants us to live. That's when we are justifying our redemption. That's when we are not failing God. That's when we are living up to the expectation of God. Every one of us, we must go back and redress. We live in a day that everybody wants to stand on the pulpit. But nobody wants to live a godly example in the marketplace. Your ministry is not in church. Your ministry is in the world. Hello, somebody. Among the association of mechanic, as a mechanic, that is where your ministry is. They must see the truthfulness you do, you apply the godliness with which you do your own work. And they must be attracted to God. Those of us who are teachers in our schools, how do the students in your school describe you? Can you conveniently bring them to Christ? Or they have no honor and respect for you that if they were even thinking of considering Christ before, once you are the one that spoke it, they would... They, they, they. Because many people have neglected righteousness. In your place of work, in the hospital, in the court, in your shop, you must live a life that your flavor, the flavor of Christ must attract people to want to come to God. We must not, people must not look at our life and they don't want to serve God. Every member of your family must look at your life and they're attracted and they're attracted to God because of the flavor of Christ in your life. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying tonight? Because of what? The flavor of Christ in your life. This is where I'm going to stop tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to continue. Basically, I'm going to look at the practical implications of being the salt of the earth tomorrow. And I'm going to talk about what it means to lose your savor. And the danger of losing your savor. If we can get those three things done tomorrow, we'll be fulfilled in this mentoring school. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Now, tomorrow I want, to, I want you to get ready. I'm going to lay hands on everybody. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lead you in some warfare prayer for 10 minutes. And I'm going to pray for you. Lay hands on you. Pronounce the blessing upon you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? So, we're going to really get some work done tomorrow. Get ready for tomorrow. Tonight, are you blessed? Is it worth your coming? I want you to go home tonight. Listen to me. I want you to go home tonight. With the desire to never disappoint God again. Do you know the reasons why many of our prayers are not answered? Because God never saw us as his agent. Are you hearing me? That's the reason why many of our prayers are not answered. Your life is doing damaging to people. Your example is even corrupting them. They have nothing to learn from you. Your life has not attracted people to God. Instead of you to be a salt and prevent your space from moral decay and spiritual corruption, you have even joined the world. And then you come to church and you start to pray. No wonder most of our prayers are not answered by God. Your voice is not cherished before the court of heaven. 
and the devil is having his way. But brethren, enough is enough. Can I tell you something? If you can continue to fulfill your ministry as a salt to God, that you are so conscious of your life, that your life has become a message to the unbeliever. You can't be singing the song they sing and you change them. You can't. Is somebody hearing me now? You can't be doing like they do and then they respect you. As much as you are sending people away from God, God can't answer your prayer. So most time, it is the kind of life we live that is putting a stumbling block to our prayer. And that is opening the door of our life for satanic attack. The devil is not as powerful as we think. But we gave him the power. Because we are not fulfilling our ministry. But beloved, I want us to take a decision that never again. Tell somebody never again. Don't let this mentoring school minister to you. Let this mentoring school minister to you. More than the prayers you are praying, God is looking at your life. Some of us, our children cannot follow our example and go to heaven. Not to talk of other people. Let our charity start from home. Assuming nobody has Bible in your environment. Be the Bible that they are reading. Can people read your life and successfully make heaven? Hello, somebody. That is Christianity. And people will look at our life and they love God. Can they look at your life and know what is seen and what is not seen? I'm challenging you today by the Holy Ghost that we must go away from here with this mindset. This is our ministry. Did you hear what I say? Come on, say, this is my ministry. The ministry of a salt. When we come to your streets, people should be glad to welcome us because you are a good ambassador. You must be able to preach in your street. And people must be able to say, yes, that woman is a Christian. Even those that don't like you, they cannot deny your righteousness. Is somebody hearing me now? They will say, ah, truth be, said, truth be told though, even though I don't like that woman, but that woman is a true Christian. That is your ministry. Did you hear me now? Our own must be different. Our own must be different. If our life is not preaching, there is nothing we will say that they will believe it. You are the salt of the earth. As long as the world continues to decay, the blood of the people will be on our head. Let's stand for righteousness. Let's stand for holiness. Let's be careful about the life we are living. Let's rise up on our feet tonight. I want you to talk to the Lord. Lord, I will not disappoint you again. Those of you who are students, you are going back to school in January. It is time to change. They must know that something happened in your life. Is that okay? They must know that something has happened in your life. Every one of us, we will, we will receive our scorecard by the kind of life we are living. members of your family must believe in the God you are serving. 
they must see the fruit in your life. The Bible says, by their fruit, ye shall what? Ye shall know them. Not by their denomination, but by their fruit. Your life is an open book that everybody is looking at. Especially if you say you are a believer. That's your ministry. Before you start to preach, check your life. Let your life bring credibility to your message. Let your life invite people to church. Let people say, ah, I want to follow you to church. I want to follow you to God. Because I trust you. I can see the beauty of Christ in your life. That where you are, the devil can no longer operate. That your life will preserve the lives of other people. Lift up your hands to Jesus tonight. And say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Have mercy on me on all my previous failures. Don't justify yourself. Oh. Don't justify yourself. Because if we put it on a practical scale, we didn't do well, oh. But there is another opportunity now. Get before the Lord and tell him, Father, I'm sorry. I didn't know that my life is so important like that. But now I know. Have mercy upon me. Every damage I've done to your kingdom. By my carelessness. In speech. In life. In word. In dressing. Every carelessness in my example that has caused people to get away from the kingdom. Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord. As from today, Lord, help me. Help me to live a life of godly example. To live a life of righteous example that because I am here the devil will not be able to operate men will see Christ in my life the flavor of Christ will attract men to God open your mouth and pray Lord help me Lord help me I won't be careless again I won't be careless again I will be careful I will be sober I will be vigilant no more carelessness. I will be conscious of my life. I will be conscious of my ministry as a salt. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Open your mouth and pray. Holy Spirit, help me. My friends will come to Jesus because of me. My family will come to Jesus because of me. This is real revival. I will not be careless again. As from today, I choose a life of godly example. A life of soberness. A life of carefulness. A life of diligence. A life that reflects the beauty of Christ. A life that preaches the gospel. Let's talk to the Lord tonight. Let's talk to the Lord tonight. Reste de bromande masando limbro malado selea. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over from now. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over a brand new life. A brand new life. A life of godliness. A life of righteous example. From now on, we will be conscious of the life we are living. We will be conscious of the fact that many people are looking at us. We will no longer disappoint you, Lord. We will no longer disappoint you. We will no longer fail. We will no longer let you down. We will justify redemption. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. The Bible says, all those who are bearing the vessels of the Lord must depart from iniquity. I break the power of sin. I break the yoke of sin. Open your mouth and pray that the Lord will help you. That everywhere you are, God can depend upon you. God can depend upon you. God can rely on you. Your example will draw men to Jesus. Ah, I pray you will not forget this message. You will not forget this teaching. 
you will not forget this message. Lord, I choose to be like Christ. More, more love to you, O oh Christ. More like you, Jesus. Let the flesh die. I take authority over the flesh, Adamic nature, and every negative spirit of the world. I disconnect from them. As from today, I will no longer fail. I'll be conscious of my life. No more hypocrisy. No more hypocrisy. No more failings. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will give you ideas. Help me, Lord, to make a change in my office, in my workplace, in my shop, in my school, in the name of Jesus. I will no longer be a tool in the hand of the devil. I'll be a tool in the hand of God. Lord, I choose to live beautiful, righteous lives that men and women will copy and see God. Lord, help me as from today. In Jesus' name, we pray. How many of you believe God has spoken tonight? And you believe God has spoken to you? How many of us are taking a decision to be conscious of the type of life we are living as from today? Let me see your hand up. Put those hands on your head. You will no longer fail God. As from this moment, a new spirit of God will take over your life will take over your heart. This message will be clear to you. As you go, the Holy Ghost will re-echo this message in your spirit. You will not be able to do otherwise. There will be a redefining of Christianity for you. In the name of Jesus, your life will change. Your life will become beautiful. Every previous areas of mistakes, Lord, have mercy, O oh God. We will no longer disappoint you. Because we know you are depending upon us. You, we are your hands, we are your legs, we are your mouth, we are your eyes in the world. Without us, your purpose cannot be established. Lord, we pray tonight, we will no longer disappoint you. As from today, our life will, will begin to release the flavor of Christ. The flavor of humility. The flavor of godliness. We'll be conscious of the type of life we are living among the unbelievers. In the name of Jesus, our life will begin to attract people to God. Our life will begin to bring people to God. We'll begin to bring people to church. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere we have lost our saltiness, let there be restoration tonight. Online, on ground, let there be restoration tonight. Let this day be a new beginning for us in the way we live our life, in the way we engage with the unbelievers in the world. We will not copy them. We will influence them. We will not copy them. We will influence them. We will not copy them. We will influence them. In the name of Jesus. Let this Holy Ghost take over. That you begin to see yourself as an agent of God. Everywhere you are. Everywhere you go. You will be penetrating with the light of the gospel. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from now. Even in our street. They will begin to see the beauty of Christ in our life. Lord I pray that this message will grip our hearts. And nobody will ever forget. Thank you Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray.